Diminished ovarian reserve is a decrease in the number of eggs available in the ovary. We know that the ovarian reserve is determined from birth and it gradually declines throughout life until it finally runs out with menopause. Therefore, age will be the main cause of a diminished reserve. But there might be a premature depletion of follicles or eggs at earlier age due to different factors. Not only does this mean that this is less chance of a spontaneous pregnancy, but also that the response of ovarian stimulation is poor. We therefore classify patients with diminished ovarian reserves when they have undergone previous treatment to retrieve three or less oocytes or when they are in alteration in the ovarian reserve parameters. The most important being a drop in the antimullerian hormone blood test levels and decrease in the number of follicles observed in the transvaginal ultrasound. As the likelihood of the treatment succeeding basically depends on the number of eggs retrieved, the outlook of these patients might be seriously jeopardized in fact, diminished ovarian reserve is one of the main reasons why the treatment does not work. The objective of the diminished ovarian reserve unit is to help women to give birth to a healthy child with their own eggs, which is why this unit is constantly searching for new strategies. To this end, a multidisciplinary team made up of gynecologists, embryologists, specialists in genetics and molecular biology not only focus on assessing the individual case, but also on developing numerous research programs over the years. In the initial assessment of the patient, we must focus on the diagnosis. It is crucial to determine the cause of a poor response or a diminished ovarian reserve, which can be due to many factors that might have an influence on the patient's health or the quality of life. For example, if there are certain autoimmune diseases involved or endometriosis, in many cases experts specializing in this disease are needed to identify it. Moreover, it is important to rule out the existence of genetic disorders, such as the chromosomal abnormalities, or determine the existence of the fragile X syndrome, which is important because it enables us to reduce the risk of a child being born with serious genetic disorders. The specific genetic analysis for patients with poor ovarian response includes a carrier type and a genetic test for fragile X syndrome. Should any of these tests come back positive, this would enable us to understand the origin of the patient's fertility issue and avoid the birth of a child with a serious genetic disorder. The advances in genetics also help us design an appropriate treatment protocol for each patient. In fact, after years of research, the Genetics and Molecular Biology Unit has created a test, the IB gene IVF, that enables us to see the gene expression pattern of ovarian response for each patient which together with a different type of ovarian treatment or different ovarian stimulation protocol enables us to draw up an appropriate and personalized ovarian stimulation schedule. Following over four years of research at Instituto Bernabeu, we've identified the genes involved in ovarian response, and this has enabled us to develop a groundbreaking genetic study of the function of the ovary. This genetic test enables the team of doctors to design pharmacological treatment that is personalized to the patient, in order to determine the most appropriate medication for her genetic profile. This improves the chances of pregnancy because a greater number of oocytes is obtained. The Genetics and Molecular Biology Unit is currently working on the assessment of different gene expression patterns involved in ovarian aging, as well as the discovery of genes that are found in patients with inherited premature ovarian failure. This will enable us to identify the members of the family who are at risk of suffering from this and give them the opportunity to plan their pregnancy, vitrify or preserve their eggs for the future. One important breakthrough in improving the prognosis of these patients has been the possibility of accumulating oocytes in several ovarian stimulation cycles. The progress made in laboratory techniques, as well as the experience of the embryologist, mean that the oocyte can be preserved for a long time with a high survival rate in the vitrification and sewing process. Oocyte accumulation enables us to have a higher number of eggs, just like in a patient who responds normally to the treatment, which would be cheaper for the patient, an embryo could be transferred, and also the treatment could be administered for a shorter period of time. We also know that double stimulation could be used for this oocyte accumulation. That is to say, we could start a stimulation session with oocyte retrieval and immediately after continue with a second stimulation session, which would enable us to carry out two ovarian stimulation sessions with two oocyte retrievals in the same menstrual cycle. Furthermore, some of our data suggests that some patients might benefit from these second stimulation sessions with more oocytes being retrieved. Moreover, our research work focuses on present-day knowledge that the patient can undergo ovarian stimulation at any time in the menstrual cycle, not only the follicle phase, 
when the menstruation begins, but also in the luteal phase, that is to say, after ovulation. However, despite these different strategies, we are still unable to improve the ovarian response or even get a response in some patients, therefore we have to cancel the treatment. These patients have a supply of residual dormant eggs that cannot be activated with the drugs that are currently available. Recently, we have used a number of treatments that activate or try to activate these dormant follicles, such as the intraovarian administration of platelet-rich plasma of the patient herself to improve the response of patients with a diminished ovarian reserve. Furthermore, there are reports that the ovarian fragmentation and its subsequent autotransplantation of such has resulted in spontaneous pregnancies after in vitro fertilization in patients with premature ovarian failure or early menopause. Finally, it should be taken into account that, although the likelihood of success of the different types of treatments available is increasing by the day, and research work currently focuses on enabling patients to conceive with her own eggs, a certain percentage of patients are still unable to get pregnant. It is in these cases when the medical team in charge must come up with an alternative and inform the patient of the real chances of success to help her make a decision to either discontinue the treatment or look for alternative options to get pregnant.